you may recall the thunder and lightning uh, animation that I put together a couple of years ago. There's a video on YouTube about that. Uh, it worked really well, and I've installed this in a number of different uh, uh, model railroad and other layouts. I've got one where uh, there's a castle and the thunder and lightning uh, is as though the, the wizard inside of the castle is doing experiments causing thunder and lightning. There's another where we have an explosion in a, uh, in a mine and this we use this along with the sound of a, a dynamite explosion to simulate that and a friend of mine used this as a, a, for a volcano eruption that he has on his, uh, his HO module. The only problem we ran into this with this and I had a couple of people comment about it if you're observing a thunderstorm you see a, uh, a lightning bolt and some time after that you hear the thunder uh, the only time you see the lightning and hear the thunder simultaneously is if it's right in your backyard uh, sound as you know travels quite a bit slower than light light for all intents and purposes, it comes instantaneously. Sound travels at about 1,100 feet per second at sea level, and it can take five seconds for a lightning strike that's a mile away to have the thunder uh, reach you. I wanted to make a modification to the circuit to do just that, to have the light go off, and then some period of time later, the thunder to be heard. The circuit that I put together, and this is the, the prototype that I've been working with, uses an Arduino and a DF player, which is an MP3 player, and there's just not enough horsepower in the Arduino to do a real-time delay, uh, be able to collect all that data, store it, and then play it back sometime afterwards. So I started thinking, well, maybe there's something I can do with the, the MP3 player, with the DF player, to do just that, and it occurred to me we're only using one of the two stereo channels in the DF player. I mean, it's a full stereo device. There's a left channel and a right channel. We're only using monaural sound. Uh, we use both the left and right channel, but we make the soundtrack identical in both of them. If I could split that and have one of the channels trigger the lights, the LED, and the other one be delayed some period of time just by moving it uh, in, the, uh, in the file to trigger the sound or play the sound that would give you the, uh, the effect that you were looking for. That's exactly what I did and here's a demonstration if I can find the push button. You see the LED blinking violently that's the strike of the lightning bolt and about three seconds later, you get the audio coming out of the speaker. Let's do that again. Thunder, or excuse me, lightning. And about three seconds later, the thunder. Now the downside to this, and it's not a big deal, is you have to uh, bypass the speaker output. You may recall in the other uh, implementation we could directly drive a speaker with the speaker pins on the DF player it has an amplifier there because the audio that goes to that amplifier chip is both the left and right channel combined and you don't want that if you were using that you would hear both the sound that makes the LED blink and the sound that you hear from the speakers so you need to use what are called the digital um, to analog output pins there's a DAC um, left and a DAC right and that's what I'm doing here. I've tied the uh, digital to analog for the, I believe it's the left channel, goes to the, uh, uh, the analog input on the Arduino. The other channel goes to an old set of computer speakers here, or you could use speakers from an MP3 player. It doesn't really matter. But it needs to be amplified so that when the sound comes out, it's quite a bit louder than the, uh, the output from that digital analog converter. So I can use the volume control to adjust that, which is also kind of nice. I'd like to move to the computer now and show you a little bit about, uh, graphically, how I set up that file and how it operates. What we're looking at now is a program called Audacity that's used as a sound editor. And on that uh, program, I have a typical sound file that we would have used in the original implementation of the Thunder and Lightning. Let me play it for you. 
You see the cursor moving along. This is about a seven second clip. And what we'd like to do is to split this into a left and a right channel so that we can deal with them individually. First thing you need to do is click on this little carrot and choose split stereo track. And you notice now I have two boxes. I have a box for the left channel and a box for the right channel. Now you may recall that the right channel is the one we want to listen to. Well, if I play this now, they go off together. What we want to do is take this one, the bottom one, the, the right channel, and we want to move it to the right, let's say two or three seconds. So how do you do that? Highlight it with your cursor, edit, delete. Let's find the one up here. Highlight all of that, edit, copy, set the cursor. I'm going to set the cursor down here at about three seconds. And now click edit, paste. So now we have this one that's going to be used to make the LEDs blink and this one down here that we're going to hear as separate tracks. Now let me put the cursor at the beginning and if I hit this you get the sound from this one again that'll do the LEDs then the sound from this one that we will hear. In order to get that all to operate properly I'm going to click on File, Export Audio, I'm going to call it yeah, let me get my, my uh, MP3 card in there. Hold on a second. I'm taking the micro SD card out of the, uh, the DF player, putting it into an adapter hooked up to my computer. What I want to do is go to drive H. That happens to be the drive letter where my card lives. I want to go to MP3, and I want to call it the same thing that's on there now. 0, 0, 0, 0, or excuse me, three zeros and a 1. Click Save. Yes, I want to overwrite it. Okay. Now, if I take that card out of the adapter, put it back into the DF player, what I'd like to show you... Okay, I've got that plugged in. What I'd like to do now is to go back to the beginning of this file. I'd like to hit the button that starts the thunder and lightning uh, animation at the same time that I press this. But before I do, I want to make this one mute. Notice how I, it went gray. I don't want to hear this one. That one's only going to be giving me the lights. I want to see if I can get a simulation of what's going on. When I hit these both, hit the button and the play button, see all the LED is coming from the top. And there comes the sound from the bottom. Let's do that again because that was kind of fun. I'm going to hit the button for play up here and the button for play on the uh, Arduino. We're getting all the blinks from the one that's moving, all the sound from the second one. Okay, the only other thing that you need to be concerned about is the value of the number uh, that the analog. Uh, pin on the Arduino is reading. If you look at my web page, you'll see that I chose a number of 900, a value I should say of 900. And if you want to figure out on your system if it doesn't work quite right with 900, make sure you bring up the serial terminal program, which is this. Let me get the Arduino back again. And if I start the, uh, the sound uh, simulation, Notice the numbers flying by. Those numbers are what is coming into the system from the analog pin that's connected to the, uh, the left channel of the stereo. The important thing is right down here, and hopefully you can see this. There's a 607, a 1023, and waiting for button push. Every time you start this up, it shows you all of the numbers that it's reading. But I've also got it programmed to find the highest and lowest number. The lowest one it got was 607, the highest one 1,023. Those numbers help me to get to, in the program for the Arduino, the 900 that works real well for mine. Again, this 900 may be a little bit different on what you're dealing with. 
Now, as a last comment, the one bit of software I want to modify, and I'll put this on my webpage directly, I would like to give you the opportunity to choose from five or ten or more uh, audio files so that you can have some of them uh, coming when the, the thunder and lightning, let's say the lightning strike is real close, or another one where the lightning strike might be a couple of miles away. So I'll add that uh, here in the next couple of days. Uh, you should be able to find that by the time you see the video. Hopefully this answers the question of how can we get uh, Audacity to, or excuse me, the uh, program itself to delay by using Audacity and the left and right channels of the, uh, the MP3 player, the DF player. Thank you.